Good evening and thank you for joining us, Aaron. We always talk about the college sports and sometimes they have some rookies in there that are kind of making it a little bit more difficult, but then also sometimes they have those veterans in there that make it better. Exactly. And last year, the girls' bas basketball team, they had a ton of rookies. Now they're into their second year. Last year, it seemed like, you know, they couldn't pull out some games. Well, this year, they are. <laughs> so I'll have some... Uh, you know a bit about that coming up in sports. Fantastic. Right. Looking forward to that, Gerard. Another beautiful day out there today. Yeah, we're enjoying it certainly, but the temperatures continue to ease on off, and those wind gusts are not doing us any favors. Let's have a look at it right about now. Northwest of 21, generally speaking, west, northwest, west have been the wind patterns for today, and gusting at times up to about 28 kilometers an hour for that 7 Celsius in an UV reading of 2. 48% is the humidity. We're still just one degree outside of the normals for this time of the year, so we'll take that great to the cold lake and area getting to nine assisted with the cloud cover and in the battlefords you're seeing blue skies and sunshine but at one point quite overcast in the battlefords during the middle of the afternoon for that nine we've got some weather on the way we'll talk about it some more in the second segment the big debate out of city council yesterday has left Lloydminster residents wondering how much longer mayor jeff mulligan will keep his job he threatened to resign after councillors overturned a bylaw to take the prayer out of city council meetings. Councillors are saying they weren't even aware they voted in favour of this bylaw, but the mayor contends he told them in a council package that they must not have all read. Whitney Stinson reports. Tempers were flying, accusations were made, but in the end, nothing was resolved. So I don't think we need to debate it any longer. Uh, the issue to pray before council meetings is still at large. Now it will have to be read three more times and decided by yet another vote. We have to acknowledge that there is a higher power and we look for guidance. I have always felt that uh, your faith is a very personal thing. And there are places for celebrating that faith, for sharing that faith, for uh, developing it further. I don't think that it represents 100% of the population that I was elected to represent. This story really began about a month ago when a special meeting was held about a procedural bylaw. It held various changes about the format of city council meetings. Now, according to a councillor who asked not to be identified, the city clerk, the city manager and the mayor outlined the changes during a presentation on an overhead projector. They said all the major scheduling switches were highlighted, but the presentation made no mention of the opening prayer being deleted. But the mayor disagrees, saying it was in their package and it's not his fault if they didn't read it. I'm disappointed in my council colleagues that they wouldn't have uh, read their package, wouldn't have understood what was there. Um, but that happens, and uh, so it's unfortunate they had to bring it back for debate today when we had three, four opportunities previously. One thing is certain, this was the first time some of the councillors had even thought about voting for or against a prayer. After an hour-long debate, they voted 4-3 to three in favour of keeping it on the agenda, even though many of the other larger surrounding municipalities have removed it. We're unique. Lots of areas were unique. And if we are the only city that stands and pays acknowledgement to and tribute to a god, then let's do that. Nobody's taking this circumstance lately. In the midst of this debate, the mayor declared that this whole process has made him consider resigning, blindsiding the other councillors. When you're the mayor and you're the elected leader, you're to build inclusivity, you're to get everybody on side, you're to lead to your vision. And uh, if I can't do that, then uh, maybe I'm not the guy to lead the city. Now, I spoke to the mayor today who says that he spent last night reflecting on his outburst and talking to his family and friends about his miscommunication. He says today he's calmed down and doesn't think he will resign. However, that doesn't change the fact that he has publicly accused all of his councillors of not doing their jobs. Whether or not this council will continue to run smoothly in the future has yet to be seen. Whitney Stinson, UCAP News. The county of Lac-La-Biche is currently looking for a new CAO. The position was left vacant yesterday after the previous CAO handed in his resignation during an in-camera meeting with council. Council had a uh, date set with Mr. Coleman to work on his performance evaluation and I think it was after that council decided to seek legal counsel with respect to the evaluation discussions. Now the county would not explain why they were looking for legal advice, just that Coleman did resign himself and was given a severance package of over $600,000. Mr. Coleman had a contract that uh, dates back several years and uh, the longer he works with uh, Lacklebish County, the, the higher his severance is. So uh, upon negotiations uh, with Lacklebish County Council, that's a severance. Council has already appointed an interim CAO. The Saskatchewan election is just two weeks away and the local NDP candidate is determined to beat out his competitors. He's been campaigning full-time for the votes of Lloydminster with a clear local platform endorsed by the NDP leader. 
Whitney Stinson introduces us to the second time candidate. Wayne Byers has lived in Lloydminster for 22 years. He raised his children here and was a Saxdale employee for most of his life. Now in his retirement, he realizes the community needs more. That thought first came after he got news his family doctor was retiring. And when our family doctor told us we'll have to go to Vermilion, Alberta to find a doctor, that wasn't going to cut it with this Saskatchewan boy. Now he's pounding the pavement, door knocking and doing one-on-ones with people in the community. His sentiment about health care is certainly echoed. And certainly in our smaller communities in the area where there are no longer emergency services, and that's hard on, on families that have to uh, travel to North Battleford uh, late at night, and that's not acceptable in, in a province like Saskatchewan. Another one of his local platforms includes getting equal power prices for residents across the city. I feel that everyone in Saskatchewan should pay the same price for their power regardless where they, where they live, and uh, that's something I'm going to uh, keep fighting for. It's a lot of fun. We're, uh, we, the NDP's uh, provincial platform includes a big affordable housing start, including a next generation rent control plan, reviewing the potash royalty, and mandating that 50% of the electricity grid comes from clean renewable energy. These are all things Bayer says he can get on board with and hopes to give the other candidates a run for their money on November the 7th. This is my second time at this and, um, and I'm not going away till the job is done. Like I've said in my nomination, I still have some unfinished business to do. And in the last uh, election I ran, I came within 66 votes, so I don't think I'm just a name on the ballot. So. Whitney Stinson, Newcap News.